What's up guys? Welcome to my first video in this MATLAB tutorial series um, where I'm going to be going over how to use MATLAB and Psych Toolbox um, for programming tasks. Um, this is going to be really useful for anybody working in a cognitive psychology world. Um, a lot of places use things like Python, um, for programming. Uh, in our lab we use MATLAB and Psych Toolbox. Um, I don't really know a whole lot about Python. I was interested in getting into it, but in all honesty this is my first time really getting into programming and I have found that MATLAB works pretty well. It's the one that my lab uses. Um, however, I do not claim to be an expert in this field at all. I, like I said, just barely started learning this, but I have pretty successfully coded out an entire experiment at this point. Um, so what I'm going to be doing in this series is just going over the very basics of uh, what MATLAB programming is, how to use its functions, how to use Psych Toolbox functions, what the syntax are, and uh, how to like bridge the gap between um, humans and computers and what that language looks like on a very basic scale. This is going to be, uh, especially this first video is going to be for people who have never ever ever programmed anything before um, and I'm going to be starting with very basic stuff like what is a matrix, um, what is a function, and how to use those things in MATLAB. So if you're more advanced um, this might not be for you, maybe a later video will be for you, but for now this is going to be a very beginner style. So <clears throat> the reasons that we use MATLAB, we'll use it for data analysis and we'll use it to program tasks. If you've ever participated in like an undergraduate research study um, and sat down for a half hour and clicked arrows, um, then this is like the program that we'll use to run those tasks and collect data. Um, so, uh, my first question when I looked at this was like, if MATLAB is the software, is Psych Toolbox like a separate software? Like, what is Psych Toolbox? Um, and what Psych Toolbox is, is a, a package deal, basically, of functions that you can download into MATLAB. So, MATLAB is your software, uh, and MATLAB has a preset of a bunch of functions that you can use. And if you don't really know what I mean by functions, that's okay. We'll go over that in a minute, um, and you can rewatch this video. But um, for now, MATLAB has functions. Psych Toolbox is just another set of functions that you can download that makes programming easier. Um, I put the link to psychtoolbox.org up there. It has a great set of tutorials on how to use each one of its functions. Um, and then it's just got like very basic um, guides on how to code out like very simple things like opening up a screen, um, coloring the window a certain color, things like that. Uh, and I'll go over those things more in depth uh, in later videos, um, but for now Psych Toolbox is just a set of functions. So syntax and functions are really the biggest um, gap bridger between humans and computers. And so in this first example here, uh, I am, I'm showing you what syntax really is. And the syntax that I'm emphasizing here is how to index something and what a uh, colon means. So indexing, for example, is uh, expressed by this statement trial sec and then a parentheses colon comma one and parentheses. So the, your trial sec is your variable and I, I've sort of labeled this out below. Um, so that trial sec is that variable and trial sec, um, which um, in many cases will mean trial sequence, is going to be a matrix. So let's say that matrix is a five by five matrix. Um, so you've got 25, let's just say they're all zeros. So you've got 25 zeros in a five by five matrix. So what we're doing here 
is we are calling um, rows and columns. So that first number um, is going to be your row, and that second number is going to be your column. So before we look at the colon, we can see in the second one we're uh, indexing for column one. So in the first column of that matrix, we know that for sure. And then that colon is going to refer to all. So what this is reading is all of the rows of column one is of trial sequence matrix. So you'll know that it's that entire first column um, that I'm referring to. And so this is just an example to show you how syntax works, how um, colons can mean lots of different things. In this context, this is what it's referring to. Um, but as you play around with MATLAB more, you can realize that there's lots of different ways to use like a colon. Um, but this is a very basic example of that and of how to index something. So uh, a function is going to be our second example here where we have the function screen and then followed by the command close all. So a function, this is actually a psych toolbox function, um, it's the screen function, and then um, the functions have a preset um, input for the parentheses. So instead of indexing using those parentheses, what we're doing is we're inputting commands. So in this screen function, the command there are lots of different commands, like this is just an example of one, but the command that we want to use for the screen function is close all, and we'll put that in the single quotation marks. And what that's going to do is it's going to take the screen that we have pulled up, and it's going to just close it all down, um, it's going to close down our program, and uh, we'll get back to our uh, terminal. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like here later in the video. But for now, that's just a very basic um, psych toolbox function. There's not anything after that. It's just the command close all. Um, no more elements added to it. Um, so there's I have at the in the description of this video, I'm going to attach a guide. Um, I believe I called it MATLAB uh, guide, um, where you can go and practice uh, syntax and. Um, some basic functions. I believe it also has if, for, and while loops in there. Um, those get a little bit more complicated. I'll make a video on those later. But um, for now, it's. I think it is very important to just understand the basics of syntax and how to use a function. Um, you can also create your own functions, but that's a later video. So um, how are we really bridging this gap? And so we know about syntax and we know about functions now. Um, and we know how they're, they can, they're a little different. Syntax um, is more like the grammar of the language. Um, and then your functions are going to be your commands. Um, and, but there's this big idea of the matrix. Um, and this is. Uh, really how we're going to store all of our uh, variables um, in MATLAB is inside a matrix and that those can be string variables like letters um, they can also be um, they can also be numbers um, but this is like a just a very solid example um, on the screen here of what I mean by like um, a gap bridging matrix. So in MATLAB it's pretty good at recognizing within a function if you want to command let's say you use the screen function you command it the screen to open and you want the screen to turn a certain color it's pretty good at recognizing that if you input this matrix into that function you're gonna get a red screen. So um, this first number on the left, the left being uh, the left side of the equation being your output, and the right side being your um, input. Um, in this case, it's just to show that they're equivalent. Um, on the left side, we've got the matrix uh, 
two five five zero and zero. So MATLAB is really good at identifying that this is a one by three matrix um, used to identify the three main colors and 255 is like the highest and zero would be the lowest. So this is telling MATLAB I want a red screen because red is the highest number and then zero green and zero blue. So it's gonna turn the screen red. Um, again, if this is still confusing, um, just watch the video a couple times. I'm gonna go over how to like assign variables um, in a minute and like how to create matrices in a second, but for now, just understand that that this is where we're storing our, all of our variables is inside of matrix. All right, so where are we gonna begin? So um, the first thing that we're gonna talk about is uh, how to create a struct. This is like a really common concept in um, a lot of uh, scripts that I think just helps you understand like at least 30% of what's, if not more, of what's going on in the script um, is just that uh, a, a struct. Um, so we'll look at that. Um, we'll look at very basic functions. Um, we might not get into creating your own functions just yet. Um, and then in a later video, we're going to use those, um, everything sort of that we create here in order to build a basic experiment. So let's close out of here. So what you're seeing right now on my screen is the uh, command window, and this is your terminal. So um, mine might look a little bit different than yours. Uh, this is all going to be set up here in preferences. You can go to home and then click on preferences, um, and you can bring this little guy over here. Um, and you can set all that to look however you want. I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, but the basics of what you need to understand here is that this is your command window. This is where you are going to do a lot of variable assigning and that this is going to be your folders. This is where you can create your scripts. Um, I created a few here for examples for later videos. Um, and we might look at a few of those, but, um, so in the command window, you could see I could assign a variable like a and then equal to 10. And then it'll tell you that a is now equal to 10. And what it's going to do is it's going to assign that variable a, um, a value down here in your workspace. And if I double click on that, um, I'm going to actually pull up the physical matrix that the program has created. Um, that is a one by one matrix that it just identifies that appears the name of the variable a and that it is now the number 10. So I can close out of that and now my program knows because it is in my workspace that I want the variable a to equal 10. So now all I have to do is click a and then return and it'll tell me that a is equal to 10. So um, uh, another a couple like really helpful commands to know is uh, the clear command. So clear is going to clear your workspace, which is this area down here. Um, so if I return that, it'll clear my workspace. A is now no longer equal to 10. So if I just type A and return, it's going to tell me that it's unidentified. So now what I want to do is clear my command window. So I'll do, to do that, I'll just type CLC which stands for clear command window. And that's how that's gonna get cleared. So if I do something like A equals 10 and B equals five, so now I've got a couple variables in my workspace, a couple of uh, lot of stuff going on in my command window. Um, commonly, I'll just type clear semicolon CLC. And what that's gonna do is it's going to clear both of these. The semicolon just suppresses the output so that I can continue to type and type more commands. Um, so it'll just do those both at the same time. Okay, so that's just a very basic overview of what we do here in the command window. Um, we can also go up here and click new script, and this is going to be like a script. So um, this is how we're where we're actually going to write our program. 
um, and a lot of the times I use my command window just to test things out, just to see if they run um, and what kind of outputs I'm getting and where it goes into my workspace and things like that. But uh, this is where we're actually going to be typing our script. So let's start by talking about what that struct was, what I was talking about in that earlier slide. So a struct is going to be a variable that gets assigned a number. So let's say I want to, let's just say I create a variable called banana. And I'm going to set banana equal to 10. So now the program knows uh, when you type in scripts, you're usually going to want to just add a um, semicolon to the end of each one of those. Actually, we can just do this all down here in the command window. So we'll just do this in real time. So um, let's just do banana equals 10. And so now we know that banana is equal to 10. Um, and that's down here in our workspace. So let's also assign strawberries equal to five. And so now we have that variable and let's also set, um, I don't know, uh, mango equal to 15. Those are just really easy basic variables. So now um, we have these other, these variables down here and it, when I look at this, you know, it just looks a little bit messy. So it would be ideal if we could compile these variables all into one variable and we could just call that fruit. So let's do this. So we're going to create a struct. And the way that you create a struct is by separating um, your variables by periods. So we'll call this fruit. That's going to be the name of our full struct. Um, and then we'll put a period and then we'll do mango and we'll set fruit.mango equal to 15. Yep, that's what we had it as. So now we created a struct called fruit down here and you can see that down here in our workspace. And what we're doing is we're creating a struct with one field, which is mango. And what we want to do is we want, and if you click here, you, you, you know, you can pull up the matrix that is fruit.mango. But what we want to do is we want to add more fields to this struct. You know, we want our strawberries and our bananas down here too. So what we'll do is we'll do fruit.banana uh, and we'll set that equal to 10. And then we'll do fruit dot um, strawberries and we'll set that equal to five. So now we've got our struct up here with three different fields, but all containing their own separate matrix. Um, this is just a really clean way of organizing your variables down here in your workspace, because now so I still have mango, strawberries, and bananas down there. But what I can do is I can do like clear um, banana and it'll clear that out of my workspace. I'll do clear strawberries and then I'll do clear mango. Um, so now all I have is um, my fruit struct with all of my variables assigned to it. Um, but that's really just the main concept of what you what you get when you assign variables separated by periods. This is just a, an example of syntax. So the, uh, this is how we use periods in MATLAB. Um, there might be other ways of using it. This is just the most common one that I see all the time with uh, with programming. So this is how we're going to assign a lot of our variables. So let's look at like a, a more um, uh, programming, uh, let's look at this from like a programming perspective. So how would we use this in our experiment? So a uh, really common thing that I see is you'll get a script that's going to be called, um, let's just call this alloc and initialize. So this is just like a basic function where we're gonna, we're just going to call all of our settings 
Um, don't worry about this top line for now. Just worry about um, what I'm going to be doing here in a second. So we're going to be calling our settings. So we want to create variables um, that have a number assigned to them um, based on settings that we want to create. So let's say, let's go back to that example of um, uh, creating like a background color or just colors in general. So let's create a struct and we'll call our struct settings. Okay, so now we have settings. Let's maybe the next one will be uh, color and then the next one will be uh, background. So now we know how to refer to our background color all the time and it'll just be within the settings struct and then in the settings struct we'll have a color struct and then in the color struct we'll have our uh, the name of what we want to refer to. So now we have background and let's create a, a color matrix which again is going to be values according to like red, green, and blue and it's going to look like that. So let's, let's color our background red. So we'll make red equal to 255, we'll make green equal to 0, and we'll make blue equal to 0. And put our semicolon. And so now, um, just to show again how to use structs really effectively, let's make another we'll call all of what we're doing settings. So the only variable that should pop down here in our workspace will be settings. Um, so now let's do settings.color. Let's do text. So this will be the color of the text that we put on our window. Um, and let's color our text blue. So we'll do um, 00 and 255. So now our text is going to be set to blue. Um, so now let's do uh, like settings dot, um, let's do setting, let's make another struct. So what other kind of setting would we want? So let's do our sound settings um, and let's do like frequency and we'll set our frequency equal to like, I don't know, a hundred. This is completely ambiguous. We're just assigning numbers to um, to structs and variables for now. Um, and again, you don't have to set, you don't have to use brackets all the time. Like um, if you're just assigning it to a number, you can just type the number if it's a single number. If it does create more than one number, like up here, um, because this is a one by three matrix, this isn't like a zero, this isn't like the number 255,000 or whatever, um, or 25,000. It's, it, it's three separate numbers in a one by three matrix. Um, so it, in order for it to know, the program to know that, you would have to create the matrix and then do like 100 and then like zero and zero, zero and then you have you know a one by X amount of numbers matrix. Um, but if you're just assigning it to a number or one number, you can just type that number. Um, so now we've got sound and frequency. Let's do settings dot, um, I don't know, what's another one. We could just do like layout and then uh, the um, out window dimensions, or I don't know. Um, we'll just do another sound one and then sound dot, that's great. And we'll set that equal to 50. Um, so now we should have um, created our settings. So what we need to do now is we need to um, evaluate this section. So in order for these things to pop up into our workspace, in order for us to use them, what we'll do is we'll highlight them, and we'll right click them, and then we can either click evaluate section, which will do this, and it'll you'll get what you want. Another way to do that, is to just copy and paste this section down into your command window. They'll do the same thing. Um, it's essentially what evaluating this section means is just copy pasting them to your command window. So now let's look into our workspace. So cool, we got our, uh, our struct that is called settings. And our settings has two fields. It's got color and sound. 
In our color section, we have our background color and our text color. And in our sound section, we have frequency and S rate. And again, you can look into these and see each one of their matrices. Um, and then if we go into background, we can see the one by three matrix of a background color. And then we can see um, the one by three matrix of text color. So that's pretty much how you use a struct. Um, they're pretty simple just in general. Um, and you'll see this a lot in um, your initialize script. This is just to call all of your settings. This, uh, the reason that we do it this way is because we want to create a place where we can refer to all of these variables all at the same time. Um, and we just refer to them by calling our settings. Um, don't be worried if you don't understand that totally for now. Um, I'll go over uh, functions and calling settings in a later video. For now, this is just a, a very basic, it's just to give you a very basic understanding of how we assign variables um, in MATLAB programming. And later I'll show you why this makes it so much easier to assign variables. Um, but for now, just play around with those uh, commands and see what kind of things you can do with this. Um, I encourage you to play around with the MATLAB guide that I have put in the description. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, I, again, I am not an expert, but I would be more than happy to um, try and answer any questions that I can or give you any good references to uh, places where you can find that information. Um, I'll make a video later about how to use uh, functions. Uh, very basic functions, and then I'll make another video on how to create your own functions, and then I will make a little video on how to put that all together in like a very basic experiment using these scripts that I have written out here already, um, where I think all we do is really just call some settings, um, uh, create bananas, oranges, and strawberries using our uh, function that we created ourselves and then just opening a window and um, saying hello world and then calling it a day. Um, but for now that's all I have and if you have any questions let me know. Otherwise I'll see you in the next video.